Hi. Gay is not sin. And Jesus isn't asking the gay person to change and be straight. That's right. The Bible doesn't condemn gay. Yeah, I've lost my bug here. So, we're living in exciting times. Jesus is about to return. And this means that uh, this generation won't pass away. This generation started in 1948. So, despite what anybody says, this generation started in 1948. So, if you were born in 1948, then, and if you were able to live a good ripe old age and be the oldest living person, then Jesus will come uh, back uh, before um, you die. So that uh, means uh, we could still have quite I was born in 1947 and <laughs> hopefully I got 20, 30 years left. So in a way you could say Jesus can come back in 20 or 30 years unless uh, science throws us a monkey wrench and, and figures out how to make us live back like they did a thousand years ago. I mean, uh, back in Adam, where you can live a thousand years, what I meant. Uh, however, I don't think that's going to happen because um, we don't, we're not able to live a thousand years. That means if we were still here and still in our flesh bodies and went into the thousand year reign with Jesus Christ, those people, there's about a billion of them, that's the billion with the B, one billion people will probably go in, uh, will still be left alive on earth when Jesus t touches his foot down uh, on my <laughs> Mount of Olive. And those people will eat of the, the leaves that are going to be uh, growing out in front of the uh, New Jerusalem uh, and they'll be healed and this healing will make them able to live around a thousand years so uh, but that's probably not going to happen before we might add another 20 30 years onto our lives I suppose with science so that's where um, you know it's quite possible we can uh, almost extend on up to the 21st century. However, uh, what is it, uh, Joel says that there will be three days. And actually he, he, he's more detailed than that. They'll, he said there will be two days and in, meaning the beginning of the third day, in, you know, in as prophecy goes, that means that's when Jesus will return. Which means then you can't go 3,000 years. You, you, you have to go um, 2,000 plus. And we're in the plus side of the 2,000, no matter how you figure when Jesus was born, plus or minus four to six years. And usually uh, they're figuring around 4 BC, 6 BC, Jesus was born. And um, so, we're, definitely in the plus side of 2,000 years since Jesus was born. And then you, you know, when you go figure, is that 2,000 years from when he died on the cross or 2,000 years from when he was born? Uh, Joel just says, um, basically, when he was with us. So that means he was born 6 BC, let's say, and then so at, um, 1994, as some people figure, would have been the time that starts this uh, third millennia. And so, so, you know, but we, some of these things for most of us doesn't really matter. What only matters is we're actually living now uh, well into the first, second decade of the third thousand years, which means at some point, um, Jesus is pretty much going to return according to Bible prophecy. But there's a few things that's got to happen. And one of the things is the church has to go through 1260 days of the tribulation. 
it'll go through a little bit more than that, but according to, to, um, you know, it just seemed like how can you, some, you know, a lot of people believe that, the, that it's a pre-trib thing. And that's kind of based on Margaret of the 1830s. And uh, Margaret of the 1830s, she was an occultist, but she had a dream. And in the dream, she says God told her that there's a pre-trib rapture. And then a little bit later, you know, that was 1830s, about 1840 or something, Darby came along and he kind of enhanced that. But Darby also was in the occult. Both of them were in the occult. And so the church today, in general, that does not want to go through the trib, that says pre-trib, uh, so the rapture is before the trib starts, they believe this from uh, people that were deep into the occult, uh, spiritualists. Uh, uh, you know, they say God, like as though it was God of the Bible, and Darby, it seemed like it's pretty hard to think that he's not referring to the Bible, but yet they were cultists. And it seemed like it's easier to accept a cultist than to accept uh, a king that was gay. You know, King James authorized the King James Version. Uh, you would rather read modern versions, a lot of you, uh, for a lot of different reasons. And one of them, as in, or many of you won't read the King James because he was a transvestite first and now we know that he was gay or at least bisexual I mean, he did marry but then lots of gays married in those old and ancient days because uh, their offsprings were uh, social security today we get social security uh, payments in those days social security was your offspring so you had to get married and have a bunch of kids so that way they take care of you when you got old uh, while you went out and, and if you were gay, you had a gay lover. And this is what history tells us. But at any rate, uh, Jesus is about to return. And when he returns, you need to be ready. You need to have your wedding gown on. And your wedding gown isn't on right now, no matter how much you think you're ready. Because you say, oh, you believe. So if you were to die tonight, yeah, if you were to die tonight and you believe, you would pretty much have a guarantee. I mean, not pretty much, you actually guaranteed uh, eternity with Christ. Because death gate is an interesting place. It cleans you up. When you come out the other side, you will be able to fit into your wedding gown when the dead rise first. Because the condition that you're in when you die, you don't have a spiritual body. You don't get a spiritual body till you rise first. The dead shall rise first. Then you get a spiritual body. And then you'll be able to fit into the wedding gown. But we which are remaining alive, we don't get to go through death's gate. We're here on earth and we need to be shaken. We need to be cleaned up and uh, get all this fatness of false doctrines and, and um, uh, customs and, and traditions before the rapture. Well, the Bible explains a few things. The two witnesses, you know, they don't suddenly believe, just like the 12,000, uh, uh, 144,000, they don't just suddenly believe, oh, look at there's the rapture. Everybody that believes gone up, so I guess it's true after all. And then they suddenly believe. No, they are well developed in their belief in Jesus Christ. The two witnesses have spent many a decade um, as a Christian, as the 144,000. And they're not going to get left behind. The rapture is a kind of a, a, a function that, that if you are saved, what happens is when they start reaping 
the earth and plucking you off the earth is uh, just like in no, uh, Moses' day, the blood on the mantles and the doorpost, the death angel passed by. Well, same here. If the uh, angel reapers coming down and they're going to pluck off the believers, they're not going to say, oh, well, here's 144,000, got to leave them behind. Oh, there's the two witnesses, we got to leave them behind. No, 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 they would take everybody. You know, I had to fight with that a long time, is how could people that believe so strongly, because you just can't suddenly believe overnight. I mean, you can, but, but, you, but then go out and be the two witness. You're going to be at the right and the left hand of God. No, you need a little bit of time with Jesus. And that means you've accepted him and spent quite a while um, uh, getting to know him. And he getting you prepared to do the ministry of the, the two witnesses. And so when you um, realize that there are um, too many things that we have to figure out of how come you can have a pre-trib it's really, really vague. There's a couple of scriptures that says, in a moment, a twinkling of an eye will be changed. There's also, uh, you know, th there's a shout of the archangel and the dead will rise first, but they don't give a date. Uh, there is Revelation 3.3 3 that says you need to keep an eye open so you won't miss the hour. You, you, it means that you will know the hour that Jesus comes, but you won't no necessarily the um, exact time you know the Bible tells us that uh, nobody knows that exact time well you can know the exact time when Jesus touches his foot on the on the Mount of Olives because um, once the two witnesses begin their ministry you can calculate seven years and that's exactly when Jesus will touch his foot down on the Mount of Olives. But you don't know when the rapture will be. We can also know that there's 1260 days that is designed to shake the church. You know, the two witnesses are here to get the church ready to meet Jesus in the air. In other words, to fit you for your wedding gown. And because uh, you're getting married to Jesus right away, he's not going to wait very long after you get uh, are raptured, plucked off earth. <clears throat> and but but then the the Bible gets some extra days, about 75 days, and uh, that's the time that Antichrist will heal. After 1260 days, he kills the two witnesses. He has about 30 days to do it because he only has 1290 days as dictator of the world. And then, um, uh, and so that starts uh, the last 30 days of the two witnesses' ministry. So we can figure it takes 30 days for him to kill the two witnesses. Once he does that, then he can stand in the temple of God and say he's God and implement the mark of the beast which means you can't buy or sell so now Christians suddenly realize that this guy really is Antichrist and that they can't buy or sell unless they take the mark and so they are um, starving you know whatever food they may have they they may actually um, be able to um, have it all eaten and the Bible gives you about 75 days and after that you have um, you could probably starve to death 
it's pretty hard to still have enough storage of food or able to figure out how to eat and stuff like that um, after a 75 day period so you're bound to starve to death so God will then cut those days short and the rapture would take place now as all prophecy teachers and predictors of all sorts and everything and all well intentioned and people study and all that usually uh, it doesn't work out exactly as the way that you might be taught so always be prepared that it could be different 20 years ago the way preaching was going uh, and it's kind of funny when you watch um, reruns of uh, pretty famous preachers preaching about the end times and they're they're saying things that are now obsolete way into the past and never happened the way they said it's a it's a gone done deal and so um, you either look kind of foolish or you you had to sit there and try to then well well it didn't work out the way I thought so no matter what we do we can only study and be pretty much uh, close to some general kind of idea how things are going to happen and uh, it may not happen that way and as I was saying you know 20 30 years ago lots of things seemed to be happening it seemed like boy at any minute uh, you can have uh, a war that can kill off a good population of the world and a good part of the world and and then you um, suddenly here we are 30 years later and now we see other kind of stuff that is much more scary and much more secure and and, at, and definite about killing off large populations and the and the more evil intent of those that are in charge and 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 the places of uh, that you'll be rounded up to uh, uh, re-education camps and stuff and mass grave sites and and all kinds of stuff that is actually literally physical things that are uh, that you can see today that would didn't exist back there 20 30 40 years ago you can, all you can find is is these people meeting and talking about these things and and writing them down and setting up plans to do these kind of things in the future and slowly work to that goal now we have a ton of stuff that you can actually go and touch and it's becoming even more public they're, they're being more brazen about telling you about all these things that could be about to happen and um, so it's it's exciting time so though I come on here weekly and, and I try to tell you the best things about what things might be happening these these things can change they could be delays and uh, but generally there are some things that are going to be so you will go through 1260 days of the tribulation and uh, that's not going to be fun hi how are you and when you get through that tribulation then you'll be able to understand uh, what it's like to be really true uh, believer in obedience to God you recognize how much a sinner you actually were even though you thought that you're forgiven all your sins you, you have to go through uh, you know a church-wide sin 2,000 years of, of church persecution and more something had to be done and it finally is taking place now and you see it with your eyes and you and you're hearing somebody being very straightforward about it you know God's messengers are going to tell you like it is you're not going to like it but later on you'll come to grips with it a whole bunch of you won't like it about two-thirds of you may just simply perish you will decide to to choose that man over there after all how you doing yeah. 
and um, and you will think that maybe he just happens to be Jesus after all. And by the time you figure out that that no, he's Antichrist, you you think maybe you like his ways better, and you don't don't like the ways of Jesus after all. It seems like that Jesus accept gays. How can you accept Jesus if Jesus accept gays? And some of you can't do that, so you just turn your back on Jesus. Well, Jesus is not going to let you go so easy. He's going to work awfully hard to make sure you don't fall all the way. But the Bible is pretty clear. It seems to be pretty strong that you can make a decision for yourself to turn your back on Jesus. Nobody can take you away from Jesus. He will never let you go. But you can make your choice. You know, we have parables that says that that seed fell on the various areas. Good soil, bad soil, rocky areas, so forth, no rain, and on and on. And that you're happy for a time. And then you didn't like what you saw, and so you went back to the world, as it were. And some of you got rooted in good ground and multiplied. Well, you know, these parables aren't said just to say that, uh, you know, some people, they believe in this once saved, always saved. Well, if it was once saved, always saved, why do we have parables that seem to indicate that you got saved, enjoyed it for a time, and then didn't like it because you didn't like what happened. Well, the two witnesses are going to say a lot of things you're not going to like. And uh, you just might think uh, that guy over there is a lot better than Jesus. So anyway, um, time is getting close. No matter how we look at it, each day it gets that much closer. If you don't know Jesus right now, turn to him and say, Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. And that God rose you on the third day. Forgive me of my sins and come into my life. A prayer, that prayer or a prayer like that will get you saved. But now you need to read the King James Version. If you read any other version, modern version and everything, they come from two individuals uh, named Westcott and Hort. Hort. You can look them up on you know, Google, read about them. They uh, translated a corrupt version into Greek and then, then translated back into English and it became the official Church of England Bible. And then decades later, they began to make modern versions out of it. And depending on the modern versions, you can have 50,000 to 80,000 corruptions. Well, as the King James, you're talking about um, under a hundred corruptions, even if that many. Uh, originally, it had about 400 corruptions, but most of them were spelling errors, which they corrected within the first 30 years. So, it is uh, good for you to read the King James. Modern versions became effective after Israel became a nation, because that deception will will go along with all other deception. Hi, how are you? And so, it would be a good idea to keep in mind when you're reading the Bible, read the King James to get to know Jesus. Also, in Acts chapter 2, it tells you about that Jesus baptized you in the Holy Spirit. First, you know, you ought to follow Jesus in baptism in water. It, that shows the death, burial, and resurrection. And so, you know, burial kind of means completely. So that you should get completely submersed in water. You know, depending on the circumstance, you do whatever you have to do. But if you can, get baptized in water. Anybody can baptize you that's a Christian in water. Jesus says he baptized you in the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2 explains this. You will uh, begin to speak a language you did not learn. You will have power in prayer. The Holy Spirit can pray through you. You feel Jesus much stronger and closer. If you have a place of pain right now, 
Put that your hand on that place of pain. Got your hand there? Yeah, you got your hand there. In the name of Jesus, be healed. See you next week.